Zeduna useko tu I remember Tafawa de Balewa period I remember the coming of Ironzi the transition from civilian to military I remember Yakub Gohon and I remember General Mutala Mohammed I remember of course Papa Basanjo then the first transition to civilian then came then uh, uh, um, the Shagari period first Bambanginda then the Bucha of Abuja the Nabi Salam then I was here in the campaign of 1999, I was with Baba Basanjo. Basanjo and Falai, Professor. I traveled around the country. I was here in Abuja, Nazarawa, Jos, Kano, Inugu, uh, Anambra. <laughs> down Port Harcourt I was in Lagos of course I was in uh, um, uh, Beokuta in Ibadan so I know Nigeria I know Nigeria <laughs> you know, the issues of elections in Nigeria and I was observing the elections in Lagos when you had Tinubu and uh, uh, his other competitor, I was the, I was the, the, the uh, an observer of NDI IRI team. So I know the challenges that Nigeria has faced in this uh, uh, period of democratization process. There have been gains and losses. I know the challenges you, you faced. When the, the, the uh, Obasanjo, uh, Tiku, then uh, Yaradua, then uh, Jonathan, and uh, of course now the final one. Uh, you now have this face here. So I know the, ch the challenges that have been here. I know that there's some gains and losses. But what we want to say is that we should continue on the path of progress. I know that there have been mi mistakes which have been done, but you say we don't want to live in the past, we want to move in the future. We want to look at what is coming forward for the, the, the continent. So uh, I want to say in conclusion that if the continent Democrats, together with the international community of democracies, do not come together and defend the vote, the elections and democracy will be delegitimized in Africa with devastating consequences. As you face these elections the, the, uh, next month, which is tomorrow's month in February, we really want to urge Nigerians to stand firm and ensure that the voice of the people is respected. As they say in Latin, that voice pop, vox populi, vox dei. The voice of the people is the voice of God. We want to wish Nigeria all the best in these forthcoming elections. Thank you very much for listening to me. We appreciate you indeed. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> you may be seated. Your Excellency, Professor Yemi Osimbanjo, the Vice President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, <laughs> Mrs. Uh, Zainab Nda Isaya, Group.
uh, in order to have a discussion with you about a subject that is of great importance to the people of Africa. I'm standing here in Nigeria, very much aware that uh, out of every five working black men in the world, one of them is a Nigerian. So Nigeria, therefore, is a giant on our continent. And they say that uh, when Nigeria coughs, the other part of Africa catch colds. So I'm honored to be speaking to you at this distinguished forum on a subject of credible elections and economies in transition. I was invited at this time. I don't know whether I was the right person to talk about this subject today, but I'm going to try my best not to disappoint. This discussion comes at a time we are grappling with this same matter back home in Kenya following our last elections last year. Professor Macau has uh, shared with you certain issues, but I don't want to go in that direction. Back home, I have expressed fears that if we do not comprehensively and credibly address the issue of credibility of this election outcome last year, the virus will spread and affect the up upcoming elections on the continent. More immediately, Kenyans may lose all faith and decide to boycott the future elections because they will be believe their votes do not matter. Kenya has become a laboratory for bad election practices that others borrow around the continent. You may recall that our malpractices of 2007 quickly became the script for Robert Mugabe in Zimbabwe. Since then, more of our neighbors have followed suit and perfected the use of technology to override the will of the people, the voters. As a Pan-Africanist and as an Afro-optimist, I fully subscribe to and support Africa's Agenda 2063, which seeks the socio-economic transformation of the continent. And I'm also a student of the late Kwame Nkrumah, who said that Africa must unite in order to progress. But I want to send a red flag at this forum. If Africa wants to achieve the goals of Agenda 2063, then we must prioritize and entrench free, fair, and credible elections by all member states. Since the reintroduction of multi-party politics in the 1990s, the quality and credibility of our elections have steadily deteriorated. You remember the struggle for uh, democratization of the continent from the independence in the 60s to the 70s, 80s, Africans were struggling because the period after independence, most multi-party systems were discarded and single-party dictatorships took root, followed by military coups that took place in the continent.